Good morning. Happy hump day. It is February the 9th, 2022. We're going to get mediocre again. One last time on the coaching carousel for 2022. There was much rejoicing. Going to go over the last two hires and then kind of go over the go over the the freshman class here one last time. Friday we'll do a spin around around the sports world as we so often do once in a while. Been very NFL centric lately. Um, it's kind of like you're driving down a high a two way highway. You know, like I ninety five in the in the in the uh, in the DMV. It's near DC. Because I live in Pennsylvania. And and you're driving down and on the other side of the road you see the most horrific wreck. And you know you know in your heart of hearts you should not look, but you have to. It's just grisly and effed up and you're just God, those poor people. And that's the NFL coaching carousel. So let's one more time opine on the shizzle. All right, so the final two, they basically waited till there was nobody left. Um, you go to the supermarket uh, right before a major winter storm. And there's basically no, you know, you're looking for the toilet paper, you're looking for the, for the, you know, for the, for the very basics, and all you can get is the store brand that falls apart in your hand. It's what you get. It is just what you get. You don't plan, you don't do things well in advance, you don't do things proactively, you end up with whatever is there. And that's what happened. And no offense to these two gentlemen. Okay, they're both fine individuals, but they had to do a promote from within strategy in both New Orleans and Houston. They didn't have to. They chose to because the guy that was still number one out there had basically made himself persona non grata by suing the NFL during the coaching search. Brian Flores probably should have waited until afterwards to sue. He got pretty bad advice, and he DQ'd himself. He's probably not employable as a head coach anymore, okay? Even though what he's saying is probably right and has a lot of merit, he's just about, he has just blackballed himself. It is what it is. Um, he's a good man. I just I think he just made a mistake. He should have waited. Because I think he had the Houston job. Nick Casario and him go back all the way back to, to the New England roots. I, I, I was like, he's got it. Slam dunk. Oops. I believe in European football, they call that an own goal. Crikey! Anyway. Um, yeah, Houston ended up with Lovey Smith. They, they promoted him from defensive coordinator up to head coach. And I will say... If you see a recent picture of him, that is a badass beard. Other than that, you know, steady as he goes. We'll see. I mean, he, he kind of had a little bit of what uh, Jim Caldwell has, and that's he's an old hand, he's a steady hand, um, should never have been fired in his last stop, that kind of thing. Um, so maybe maybe he can make that thing work. Um, but I'm thinking if you, if you're just going to keep the same vibe going in your clubhouse, then why'd you fire the first, why'd you fire the guy in the first place who was showing improvement at the end of the year? If you really need a culture change. That's why you'd fire that guy, David Culley. Why? Why you fire him and then just promote from within? Makes no sense. The second one makes a lot more sense because New Orleans was not expecting to have to replace... Sean Payton. Sean Payton has, has gone off to um, retirement. Dennis Allen, 
was promoted from coordinator as well. So I think he'll do a reasonably good job. Their culture is a solid one. See, there it makes more sense. Houston, not so sure. Not so sure. All right, so those are two. Now let's recap the other seven again. Um, Las Vegas has gone the, the, the Patriot way. Josh McDaniels has taken over. Dave Ziegler took over as GM. Um, they have been very busy. They've made some nice signings. They really have. Um, as far as their coaching staff. <clears throat> They're off to a good start. So I'm hoping the Josh McDaniels of 12 years ago. Um, you know, and, and quite frankly, what I was 12 years ago is 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 a mere a mere shadow of what I am now. And I think every person who is committed to personal growth can say that. They can say, okay, the guy I was 12 years ago, be please. I'm not the same dude. I grow. I get better. So hopefully Josh McDaniels is going to embody that. He's going to bring a ring to the desert. We shall see. We shall see. Um, not sold on the track record of, of um, you know, the, anybody from the kingdom of the hoodie. And I just I'm not I'm not real sold on the track record. But maybe maybe this is the guy that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna change that narrative. Let's hope. Jacksonville, um, Jacksonville did a did a pretty decent job with with their hire. Um, being that they brought in Doug Peterson, I think that was a perfect hire. Um, and see, I, I was saying this whole time, Jacksonville is doing Jacksonville things, and then all of a sudden they just nailed it. Pretty impressive, actually. It's almost like the changeup, you know. You're expecting dead. You're sitting dead red. You're expecting a fastball. Middle, middle in. You're gonna crush it. And he and he goes circle change outside corner, paints the black. You're and you're going to, you're going back to the dugout. That's what Jacksonville did. Denver brought in Nathaniel Hackett from the the offensive coordinator from. Um, from Green Bay. I, I think that was a great hire. I don't think that was just to get Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers may not be going there. I think it's legitimately just a very good hire. He's a good offensive mind. He's done a lot with with less. He's got a world-class quarterback, but there's never been anything around him. Devontae Smith, you sure, but, but he's never had the depth of options that other coordinators have. You know, and, and he's he's produced. It's been a pretty pretty prolific offense. Um, the one thing I would say though is, you know, where's the running game? You know, he's never he's never had the running game. But then again, he's not the GM. So you know, you got to cook with the ingredients on, you know, that are in your in your cupboard, and that's that's how you have to judge a, an offensive coordinator. Um, the Giants brought in Brian Dayball. That kind of spawned the Flores suit. Um, but Dayball is a solid hire. You look at Buffalo on both sides of the ball, and you're just like, mm, yeah, they're coming. So Dayball was a great hire. Eberfuss in Chicago, just I don't understand why that wasn't Jim Caldwell. I wish Eberfuss, um, and, and is it just me, or do I think about flossing my teeth when I hear that name? I'm sorry. It just, it just it's, it's, it's like a name recognition thing. Some people use mnemonics. I have to. I have to have reference points. It's like uh, word association. Um, he's a pretty pedestrian hire, as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm not so sure that they that they did the right thing there. But that's that's. You do you, Chicago. You know, go figure. You haven't won a title since '85. Um, Minnesota. Kevin O'Connell was a home run. Now they're not going to be able to hire him officially until after the Super Bowl on um, on Sunday, but uh, you'll hear about him next Monday, Valentine's Day. That's a nice timing, right? But he's the offense coordinator with the Rams. Prolific. I think they're going to do a great job. Cousins is good enough. He won't be able to replicate what he's doing there. But there's a lot of talent there. They got speed on the on uh, at the skill positions. 
they they could put some numbers up and this guy could change the culture um more of a winning culture okay he comes from that a little bit of youthful energy i like it and then and then the big shocker for me because i i thought there were other people obviously the owner of the Miami Dolphins, Stephen Ross, needed someone he could control. If you, you listen to the things that have been put in the report or in the in the lawsuit from Brian Flores, he was asked to tank. He was asked to um, do a multiple thing. Uh, just, just an incidence of control over the head coach that's just kind of uh, icky. Icky. I mean, it's just... I. He seems to be a bit of a sociopath. Um, he just wants control. So, of course, he didn't go with a conventional pick. He went with somebody who has almost no experience as an offensive coordinator. Um, who resembles Shaggy from, from Scooby-Doo. Hey, Scoob! Got the doobies? What are you doing? So in a cloud of ganja smoke, uh, Mike McDaniel is taking his talents to South Beach. What could go wrong? Bruh. If you've seen his, if you've seen any of his social media, or if you've seen his, um, where he's talking to Kyler Murray, and Kyler Murray's like, "What's with this dude?" And he's actually asking. He's actually saying to Kyle Murray, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna earn your respect." You don't say that. You might say it if you're high, but you don't say it when you're the NFL head coach. You have to command respect. See, they they say in certain circles, you know, the ones like where they know what they're talking about, where where you don't ask for respect. If you have to ask for it, you don't, you shouldn't get it. A respectable man never has to ask to be respected. He just simply is. He's not all hat, no cattle. You know, he's... He's got full... You know, he's, he's full sack. Or full stack. Whichever way you'd like to say it. And it's just evident to everyone around him. This ain't it. <laughs> When I saw the video of him FaceTiming Kyler Murray, first off, I was I was thinking Scooby Doo. I really did, and I was thinking Snoop Dogg would be the official supplier of of doobies for the Miami Dolphins. And then I was thinking the I was thinking thinking the song. As I was watching, I was I started humming the humming the, the old song Three Blind Mice." Because you have the blind leading the blind. Him and Kyler are going to be funny to watch. I have literally every expectation that this will be the comedy reel of comedy reels. I'm going to love this. Stephen Ross will probably tolerate this for a year or two before the novelty of it and the winning three or four games next year, rubs off. Because he's going to win just enough games not to get the number one pick. Because he did want to tank before. But he, he's going to go backwards. Now, all, all humor aside, this guy was the offensive coordinator in pretty much in name only um, for one year on a club that was offensively challenged. You go up and down the the, the offensive uh, hierarchy of the league. Where are the Niners? Keep going. Keep going. They ain't there. They're not up there. They were a defensive team. Kind of like, but not in the same class, as the 2000 Ravens, who carried Trent Dilfer. By the way, while I'm on the subject, big mouth, all hat, no cattle. Game manager, who's now an expert in quarterbacking. You break. So same thing in 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 uh, in, in in the Bay Area. 
you've got a you've got a quarterback whisper as in quotes. Break in Shanahan, who is a who is a, 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 a just a he's just a mere echo of his father, who is a really good coach. But Kyle is calling the play. He's basically the offensive coordinator as the head coach. So he brings this guy in. He brings in Doobie Dude in name only. And a year later, he's the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. And and Stephen Ross is going to, with a straight face, get on TV and go, no, we're not tanking. No, no, no. This isn't a tanking project. Uh-uh, no. Hey, Mike. Got any doobies? Unbelievable. In a sane world, the NFL Board of Governors is looking to strip Ross of his of his of his franchise. But that won't happen. It should. I feel very, very, very sorry for the Miami uh, the Miami um, fan base. They've suffered for a very long time. They had a good coach, nine and eight back to back years. With a bust as a as a quarterback, I've I've said this before. So, boy, did they screw up. You almost have to think it's intentional. Gooby dooby doo. <laughs> and so I will send it packing. The two thousand twenty two. Coaching carousel, which is fairly amusing at times, bewildering at others, and just not that satisfying. So on Friday, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go around the world of sports a little bit. We're getting close to the NBA All-Star break. Um, there's some amusing anecdotes that will that'll be you know, flying around about that stuff, uh, about that particular league. Uh, Premier League is uh, overseas in uh, European football. They are they are getting back going after the international break. Uh, there's a lot going on all over the world of sports, and I will cover it in my uniquely mediocre fashion. But until then, I want you to enjoy a fantastical hump day, and I want you to very much, you know. E- you just want to do me a solid, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit the ringy dingy, say all, and then spread this video far and wide. Sharing is caring, and I need all the caring that I can get. Enjoy yourselves. I will be back hollering at you on Friday. Peace out, me homies.